everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video tonight. I have your night two review of WrestleMania 36. The first time ever WrestleMania is on a two-night weekend basis here. Last night was obviously night number one on Saturday, and then tonight we had night number two here on Sunday. And I could honestly see this being a trend for future WrestleManias, man. I actually thought that splitting it up into two separate nights is a genius idea. Maybe you could go NXT on Friday, WrestleMania night one on Saturday, WrestleMania night two on Sunday. Sunday. This allows for, you know, both the you know, the Royal Rumble winner can actually main event the show like they're supposed to do on either night one or night two. Doesn't matter. The shows are just a lot easier to sit through. I don't know about you guys, but it felt refreshing last night not to just sit there for hours upon hours. Uh, I think it was right around like two, three hours. I think it was like two and a half, three hours long for night one. And I thought it was just refreshing, man. It just felt great. I will say, though, that most of the matches, majority of the matches, I think there were eight matches. Five out of the eight were not good. I would say that there were only three good matches on last night's card. I thought the rest of the card was very just boring and just meh and just very Raw-like or, you know, regular show-like. It did not feel like WrestleMania one bit. The triple threat ladder match, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins, and of course the Boneyard match are the only matches that had my interest. They did a very fantastic job. Shout out to those talents. I thought that Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn was okay. It just lacked WrestleMania quality. I don't know what it was. It kind of ended out of nowhere. They did, I don't know if they didn't have the time. I don't know what the deal was. But we're back for night number two. We got some epic matches on here plenty of matches on this card coming in that I was very excited for. Actually, a majority of the matches on this card that I was looking forward to take place on night two. So, here we are, guys. We're going to dive into it, reviewing night two of WrestleMania 36. Would it live up to night one? Would it be way better than night one? Let's find out together. Reviewing the show, telling you everything that took place, what I thought about the matches themselves, the feuds coming in, any cool attires or any badass shit that I want to mention during this review. But let's shut the hell up and dive into night two of WrestleMania 36. So the pre-show on night number two of WrestleMania starts off with Natalya taking on Liv Morgan. Now, I really don't know why we're getting this matchup. I think they had like a little mini feud going on, something that dates back to the chamber maybe or something like that. I, I don't freaking know, man. It's just an undercard feud that I, I really am not invested in. I don't really care about. And uh, I think the right woman won. You know, Liv Morgan did win here. You know, they had some good little grappling and technical stuff going on. Kind of, you know, Natalya kind of like, you know, playing her up stuff like that with Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan kind of surprising Natalia, and she gets like a roll-up win at the end, and I thought they told a decent little story in here, but nothing too, you know, amazing. You know, it was just kind of like a standard wrestling match, and it, it was what it was. You know, nothing too crazy, nothing too good. I mean, it wasn't like anything immaculate, but I am glad that Liv Morgan won just because, you know, you're building her up for, you know, the future. You know, she seems to be somewhat credible, at least right now, and hopefully she can continue to get better. This is a good way to start off with a, a victory over Natalia. But, um, yeah, that's about it for this, this match, man. So night two of WrestleMania 36 opens up the main show with Charlotte versus Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship. Charlotte is coming off of the Royal Rumble win, a, a Royal Rumble win where a lot of people really didn't agree with her winning. I was included in that. I really didn't want her to win. I think it was just over the top. It wasn't necessary to uh, to get to this matchup here, but she is taking on Rhea Ripley, a talent that I am very interested in. I think she's fantastic. And, you know, Rhea Ripley comes out rocking the Vegeta gear. It looked like it looked like inspired Vegeta gear who is my favorite anime character of all time so that is is excellent I thought that was great Charlotte and Rhea beat the hell out of each other I thought it was a good match I thought that they you know engaged each other the intensity was there they both brought it they gave it everything they could very hard hitting very intense which I always love out of women's wrestling if the women ain't bringing it man I can't get invested if you're if you're gonna pussyfoot around you know those half ass swings and stuff man I want you to hit the shit out of them go in there and wrestle and that's what these ladies did man they impressed me a lot but Charlotte is your new NXT women's champion after defeating Rhea Ripley, making her tap out, no less. Very interesting development. Don't know where we go from here. You know, her going to NXT. Maybe Rhea Ripley jumps up to the main roster, goes after Becky. I don't know what we're going to next. But uh, this was a, this was a pretty good match, man. I mean, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't bad. It, it was it was good. I thought it was good as far as what we got, and it was intense, which I can always appreciate. But Charlotte, new NXT Women's Champion. How do I feel about that? I don't know. I really like Rhea Ripley a lot. So I guess we'll see where we go from here. Next up, guys, we have the singles match between Bobby Lashley taking on Aleister Black. And this matchup was actually a lot better than I thought it would be. I thought it would be a standard, you know, regular Raw match. And it wasn't much better than that. You know, it's not like it was anything immaculate. But I thought that they put on a solid little match. I thought it was a lot more upbeat, a lot more physical than I expected it to be. And I thought both men showcased some pretty good things. Uh, you know, the end of the matchup actually came when Lana got up on the apron. It seemed like Bobby Lashley was trying to put Aleister Black away. Lana gets up on the apron, and she was like, you know, uh, spear him. Go 
going for a spear. Do a spear, put away Aleister Black like that. You know, so Bobby's like, you're right, babe. You know what? You're good. Gives her a little air kiss right there. Goes to the corner, goes for the spear, gets Black Mass out of nowhere. One, two, three. Aleister Black does defeat Bobby Lashley. Super agree with the decision of that. However, you know, coming into this matchup, I did not expect this matchup. You know, I didn't want this matchup. I thought it was super random coming in. You know, no storyline built off of this. It was literally just taking two random guys, throwing them together and saying, go out there and have a match just because we want to fill up this card even more than we need to. But, you know, it, it it's somewhat delivered. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say it was the greatest match ever. You know, it wasn't ridiculously good. It, it may not have even been good, you know, but it wasn't bad. And I actually found myself engaged in it, waiting to see what happens next. So, you know, I guess that gets some football points right there. But Alistair Black does defeat Trashley, and I agree with that sentiment very much so. Next up was the Love Triangle match, if you want to call it, between Dolph Ziggler and Otis. You know, all over this Love Triangle with Mandy Rose, and it was unveiled that Sonya Deville was the secret mysterious texter, you know, texting Otis, saying, you know, F you, basically, and just, you know, crashing in on the Valentine's Day parade here. But coming into this match, you know, it's an interesting story, you know, I guess if you're into the soap opera thing, the relationship thing in your wrestling, you know, I can see how you get behind this. You know, I wasn't invested, honestly. I'm a huge fan of Dolph Ziggler, if you didn't know. I think that Sonya and Mandy are getting better every single week. Otis, you know, he is what he is, you, you know, whatever. But, you know, I I, I just I didn't care for this match. Uh, for Dolph Ziggler's first ever one-on-one -on -one wrestling match at WrestleMania not only comes in front of no fans, but also is against Otis, and also he loses in this match because Mandy Rose gets in the ring, hits him in the nads, takes him to Dick Kick, Dick Flick City, and uh, he loses the match, man. Otis defeats Dolph Ziggler, scoops up Mandy, they kiss and make up, happy ending for the big guy. He takes out Ziggler, and yeah, just a feel-good moment here at WrestleMania for all the people that cared about it, and I'm, I honestly am not one of those people. I hate they fed my boy to this storyline and this little feud thing here, but whatever, man. I, I don't know what to say. It was on the card, and that, that's what I thought of it, and that's what we got, and I'm just ready to move on from this. So, Dolph Ziggler, yeah, just Jesus, man. I, I just love him, and, and it just, this is what we get. Moving on. Next up, guys, we had the match that I was probably most looking forward to, the last man standing match between Randy Orton and Edge, two of my favorite talents of all time, squaring off here. Everyone knows the story. The promo to this matchup was absolutely badass. It freaking had me have chills. I might have even shed a tear at one point. I mean, this thing was emotional, man, and you felt it in this match. I thought this match was pretty good. You know, I, I don't think it had to be a five-star classic. I think in front of a crowd, it would have been a hundred times better, but I enjoyed this. It was a good old classic brawl. I'm talking all over the arena, all over the performance center, man. They got on top of the truck. They battled in the back of a truck. They, you know, off a cage through a table. I mean, they brought it, man. And I want to add in another note. Did anyone see that ginormous ass ladder to the left of the truck? My God, the, the, the freaking ladder was bigger than the truck by that catering table. I just wanted to mention that. Let me know down in the comment section below if you noticed that big ass ladder. But this matchup was fun, man. I enjoyed it. You know, I think that uh, I would have appreciated some in ring action and not just a classic brawl the whole entire time and I would have preferred maybe another gear but for what it was the story was told I, I felt the emotion in both men I liked the attire Edge looked like a damn million bucks Randy Orton looked great as well and uh, the gray attire with the silver shoes and the maroon accents, man, that shit was beautiful that Edge rocked, man. I, I, it was great. He looked fantastic. I hope he comes back for another year. You know, we need to send him off in in a in the right way. I think that he needs to come back for a whole nother year, give us some good feuds, and then retire at the end of next WrestleMania in Los Angeles or Hollywood or wherever in front of a capacity crowd. That's what we really need here. So hopefully that's what we get. But I enjoyed this match for what it was, and Edge does win with a concerto at the end he makes the ref stop the count he's like no you don't can count he even bleeped out the f there and uh you you could just feel it in his voice he hits the concerto on randy orton after a just vicious battle man and and he wins the match and i agree with it great shit all around these men killed each other and i was all for it man good good stuff edge defeats randy orton and i hope to god he sticks around for another year and we get some matches in front of live crowds before he calls it off Next up, guys, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Street Profits taking on Angel Garza and Austin Theory with Zelina Vega 
in their corner. And honestly, man, this matchup I did not care for just because it was just so random to me. It just was so thrown together. I'm not a big fan of Austin Theory. I'm really not even a big fan of Angel Garza. I enjoy the Street Profits work. I was not invested in this matchup. You know, they brought it. They had some cool moments here and there. The athleticism was definitely on display. It was a pretty quick one. You know, they got their athleticism in. There were some decent things here and there. Nothing too special to, you know, take note of or write home about. It was just like a, a here and there match and then the match was over and the Street Profits do retain the Raw Tag Titles. Definitely the best decision made right there. I definitely think that was the right decision you would have. Just, I don't know, it just wouldn't be right had they lost here. But the Street Profits retain and I am definitely glad of that and I'm ready to get figures of all of these guys so that I don't have to just put a stupid ass render up. Next up, guys, was the Fatal 5-Way SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bayley, Sasha Banks, Lacey Evans, Naomi, and Tamina. Really don't know why we had this Fatal 5-Way. You know, Paige just comes out and announces it. Very dumb, very weird. Just like a lot of matches on WrestleMania's entire card this year. Just a bunch of randomness and things thrown together. But, uh, you know, I would have rather preferred Bayley versus Sasha one-on-one. -on -one, the match that we've been waiting on forever now. The feud that we've been waiting on forever now to play out on TV for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Didn't play out here. You know what? Uh, uh, Tamina, they booked her to look like damn Superman out here, man. She took like eight finishers, eight signature moves right in a row to eliminate her. Everyone pinned her at once. My God, I didn't know that she was the Braun Strowman or the Brock Lesnar of the division, but now I'm glad that I know that. You know, uh, there were some cool little things back and forth here, but this match did nothing for me. I thought for a second, for, for sure, I thought Lacey Evans was going to win the SmackDown Women's Championship. That did not take place, thank God. Sasha Banks gets eliminated by the women's right by Lacey Evans and then comes back and helps Bailey to retain the championship so maybe we are getting Sasha and Bailey moving forward for the title I don't know, but I'm glad they didn't put it on Evans. I am not a fan of Evans. I think she's garbage. But anyways, guys, uh, that about does it. You know, Bailey outlasts them all. With help from Sasha Banks, she retains her SmackDown Women's Championship. This match didn't really do anything for me. I was getting ready for The Fiend taking on John Cena. Next up, guys, was the Firefly Funhouse match between the GOAT, the best wrestler of all time, my personal favorite, John Cena, taking on The Fiend Bray Wyatt in a matchup that was built up beautifully. I thought the story being told, the promos cut back and forth, the moments, everything leading up to this was excellent. And uh, but before we even get into that, let's just start off with John Cena, please change your effing shirt and your outfit, all right? I want a new custom to put up on the shelf. I can't do that if you keep bringing the same shirt. Give me a new shirt, damn it. Anyways, let's get into this. All the imagery and just the simulation. If you guys missed this, you gotta go back and watch it on the network. I, I don't think I can do it justice right here. There was so much that took place between the imagery and the promos and everything that it was just too epic and too too much to take in and give to you, you know, exactly what happened. But basically, The Fiend invited John Cena into the Firefly Funhouse and he basically kind of recreated his career. He tried to, you know, show him his ego side, his crazy side. He, he was taking shots at Cena. It was just, I, I really don't even know what to say, man. It was just so I, I found myself lost in what I was watching like that. Maybe it's because I'm such a big Cena fan and like I was just invested in what they were trying to sell me as far as the story is concerned, man. It was beautifully done. Whoever produced that, wrote that, had a part in that, hats off to you, man. I, I was I was drawn in. They, they did so much history and they played into it so much. How Cena is basically the new Hulk Hogan and basically, you know, he's muscled up and he has no talent, and basically he was just picked, you know, right from the lot and put into this place by Vince McMahon, and, you know, all it took was that one night versus Kurt Angle, and uh, he made a mockery of all of that in different moments in Cena's career, and, like, they had flashes of all his downfalls, and he mounts over, the, over Bray Wyatt, and he just unleashes his anger, and it's showing all those moments where he's been defeated or where he's been destroyed or where he's been hated, and it, it was just beautifully done, man. I really can't do it justice. You really have to go back and watch it. It was beautiful. If you if you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if I'm the only one that felt this way. I'm just telling you my personal opinion. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. But ultimately, The Fiend locks in the Mandible Claw on Cena and defeats him. And I don't know. Like, it looked like we're going to get a heel Cena. I don't know what the plan is. But my God, I am invested into this shit. I'm ready to go, man. That was freaking great. I loved every second of it. If you missed it, you got to go back and watch it so you know what I'm talking about. But it was very cinematic. It was a lot of editing. A lot of, you know, sort of like Taker and AJ Styles. Not cinematic like WWE films on location it was it was different it was more of like in a in an, in an arena setting and it was you know pre-taped and edited up very well done by everyone involved i, I appreciated it i loved it john cena loses to the fiend here but uh it, it was excellent man you got to go watch it and tell me what everybody thought what did you think of this down in the comment section below i'd love to know but the fiend does overcome john cena 
And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, WrestleMania 36 coming to an end here on night number two. The WWE Championship on the line. The Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar defending against Drew McIntyre, the boy right there. Of course, Drew McIntyre did win the Royal Rumble. I've been waiting for this match. I've been waiting for him to get his moment. Drew McIntyre stepping in here, man. I, I was so hyped when he returned to NXT. Here he is back, and oh my God, I was so excited for this man, and I, I was just rooting and hollering, and he finally did. It. This was not much of a match at all. It was your typical kind of Brock Lesnar Goldberg match. We spammed finishers, you know, for a minute there. I thought he was going to lose. He took three or four at fives. It took three or four Claymore kicks to Brock Lesnar, but he finally put him down. You didn't miss anything if you missed the match, but if you want to go see Drew McIntyre finally win the WWE Championship atop the mountain, the chosen one, he climbs up the top and he wins, dethrones Brock Lesnar, and we have a new WWE Champion in Drew McIntyre, and I'm so happy for the man. I know how much this means to him. I wish it was in front of a capacity crowd. He totally deserves it. This was excellent, beautiful, I mean, as far as moments, the match was nothing. But I'm so happy for Drew for the, the mountain that he had to climb. He fell off. You know, at a young age, he was he was the chosen one, dubbed the chosen one by Vince McMahon himself. Never won a world title. And then he gets in, you know, he gets lost in the shuffle, falls off, and then he leaves. He gets better. He grows. He gets bigger. He works. He works. He climbs back, comes back to NXT, becomes NXT champion, goes to the main roster, overcomes the odds, wins the Rumble, and becomes WWE champion. What an epic story. What a beautiful look, man. I freaking appreciated this so very much. It, it was beautiful, man. It, it, was, it was beautiful. I enjoyed it. It was great. Drew McIntyre is finally at top, and WrestleMania 36 come to a close, and I gotta say, honestly, I think night one was better than night two. You know, you had your moments here and there, not specifically on night two. You know, I appreciated, you know, uh, the match with Randy Orton and Edge. I appreciated the moments. I loved the John Cena Fiend type deal, even though it wasn't much of a match. I loved the story they told and everything like that, but overall, night one was much better, and as a whole, I do not think WrestleMania 36 was very good. I will say that right right now. I want to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Just a lot of Raw-like matches, a lot of just nothingness, even though we had some cool moments and a few good matches here and there. But I'm very happy for Drew McIntyre. I thought that was excellent. What a way to cap off a two-night weekend here. Again, I think this is going to be the formula moving forward. I think that we will get a two-night mania from here on out. I cannot wait for the crowds to come back. I cannot wait for just life to go back to normal, and I hope that we can get there very soon. Everybody do their part. Everybody do your job so that we can get back to normalcy and we can get these epic moments in front of live crowds and we can continue enjoying professional wrestling together. But that is going to do it for my WrestleMania 36 Night 2 review. If you missed Part 1, definitely go check that out from last night. But I'm getting the hell out of here, man. I enjoyed moments of it here and there. It, it helped me distract from the fact of everything going on in the world and I guess that does its job, right? But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at My Damn Toys. Let me know what you thought of WrestleMania 36 Night 1 and 2 down in the comment section below. What do you think of the new champions? What did you think of the matches and everything like that? Let me know down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.